Hello, my name is Jennifer Sigmund, and I work for Career Development and also for the School of Business. And this is Chelsea Goza. She works for Career Development and for the School of Business, too. And we're here today to talk to you about all of the resources and all of the opportunities that the Center for Career Development offers a student here on Henderson's campus. So we're gonna give you an overview of the services and we're also gonna give you some uh, professional networking experience advice. So these are the services of career development. One of the big things that we do, we do it every semester is we do a career fair. This year, we're gonna change it up a little bit. We're gonna do a virtual career fair and it's gonna be from November the 2nd through November the 6th. And what's gonna be neat about this virtual career fair is we're gonna break these, through that week, we're gonna break down the week into segmented career fairs based upon different degrees and different uh, places where you could work in different degree categories. So that's gonna be an exciting week. Also, we do career counseling. We can help you and our GAs can help you decide for those that are undecided or don't know what they wanna do, help them with career counseling. We also help students do mock interview practice. I know that's one of those things that sometimes students think, well, I can go into this interview and I can do it without any practicing, but those students that practice do a lot better in the interview than those that do not. So we can run through the common questions that are asked during the interview, critique you on how well you did, and help you perfect answering those questions. Another exciting area that we manage and control is ready for career closed closet. We have a huge area over on the second floor of Garrison where we have a lot of clothes that have been donated by professionals. And every year we do a big drop to collect clothes, but also every semester we also give away clothes. So if you need a tie, you need a shirt, you need a pair of pants, possibly even a pair of shoes, come over and see us and we can give you that jacket and those things for free. And we don't ask that you give them back. Once you pick them out, they're yours. Also, we do resume and job application assistance. Students need to have their resume looked at multiple times by multiple different people. We know that many of you start your resume while you're in some of your classes, but we really should have it evaluated not only by that class, by that professor, but you also should bring it over to us and let us look at it a second time. And we highly suggest after you have it looked at by us that you take it to your professor within your field and have them look at it through the eyes of your field and make sure that it looks good for those that you would work for in your field. We also can help you with the job application. There's several different pieces typically you submit for a job application and we can tell you how to write those things correctly and submit those things correctly. And finally, we have an exciting thing called a Canvas course for career development that Ms. Goza developed. And that course tells you different areas that you may have questions about. Example, you want to know how to write a resume really well. You can look at the lecture and the different sources and resources she put out there to how to write a resume really well. If you want to know how to do a mock interview or an interview really well, you can look at that lecture. Um, if you want to join that Canvas course, and we highly suggest that you do, you need to fill out or submit your admission on this Google form address that we've had submitted right here, and we can add you into the course. And so Ms. Goza and I, what we do over in the School of Business, is we teach our students how to do all these things, but we created a Canvas course so students across campus can utilize the resources that we teach in class use them for their personal assistance and you can use it as many times or get in it or log in into as many times as you want to. So those are all the services of career development. Next thing that we're gonna I'm gonna talk to you about on the next slide is job search and networking. When it comes to job searching and networking, we sometimes think that that's an easy thing to do and it is not. It's complicated and it has a way about it, and we're able to within career development. So Ms. Gozen and I have quite a few connections with different companies, and that can help 
then that matters when you're looking for a job. Also, every week we probably have one to two, if not three emails a day about jobs that are potentially open and we post those jobs within our career canvas shell so that way you guys can easily search for a part-time, a full-time job. But we're going to go over with y'all a diagram that tells you about how companies traditionally think about job searching and how we have been trained to think about career search. In the next slide. So uh, I love this book, and Ms. Goza and I both have this book. It's How to Color Your Parachute, and I would highly suggest if you don't have that book that you get that book. Now, also, I would check with the library. The library may have this book on file where you could check it out, but it has some great advice in it. But the big advice that it has, it has this diagram within How to Color Your Parachute. And so we've been trained how to look for jobs and then how employers look jobs. So the way that we search for jobs, so we think, well, if I can just send a resume, if I can uh, use an ad, I can use an agency, I can use a colleague, I can use group of skills, and then from within, I possibly could get a job. And that's the harder way of actually getting a job. The way that employers want to hire people is the opposite way. They want to look from within. They want to see your proof of skills. They want to know that you have uh, colleagues that you um, that could vouch for you, and you're also wanting to use an agency, using an ad, and using a resume. So that's how employers fill a vacancy. So we highly suggest this goes, and I do to the students that we teach, that you definitely need to do an internship before you graduate because that's helping you get hired from within. It also shows your proof of skills. We also highly recommend that if you could work for a company before you start, that would be great. Um, before, you, before you graduate, that would be great because that's from within. If you have a job that you've been working for a company for a long time, understand that they'd rather hire from within than outside of the company because every time they hire a new employee, that costs them money. And it's a gamble on their behalf so if you're gonna be a good fit for them. But if you're from within and you can show proof of skills, then that gives them a higher probability the money they spend on you is gonna be worth it in the end. So talking about proof of skills, there's a system that we have purchased or the university has purchased that every student has access to that's called Portfolio. And Portfolio, Ms. Goes is gonna go over Portfolio and tell you how it can show your proof of skills and the capabilities that it will be able to do to help you get a job in the end. So yes, um, as Ms. Sigmund said, you know, a big part of getting that, that career related position after you graduate is being able to test the waters, if you will, and, and maybe do an internship, um, have some projects or have some experiences where you actually use the skill set that you're going to need in that career. Um, that's a benefit to you because it lets you practice. It helps you to perfect um, the skill set that you need to be successful in your career. But it's also beneficial to a potential employer because what I tell my students regularly is as a university student, a traditional student, um, who graduated from high school and went to college and you really haven't been out in the workforce and worked a full-time job just yet, you find yourself, when you reach graduation, you find yourself in what I call a catch-22, which means that you have learned the knowledge from the textbook, you learn knowledge from lectures, you've done some great projects and some great work in your classroom setting, but you haven't had that one to five years of relevant work experience that an employer is looking for. So again, you're in that catch 22 and what that means is you will have a little bit of a harder road than someone who's been out there maybe 10 years and, and worked a little bit. I'm um, a harder road to, to interviewing and landing the right job. Um, but Fortunately for you, and this is something that you have the um, ability to, to access and use that Ms. Sigmund and I did not. We didn't, there wasn't a, a system that helped us showcase what we're good at when we were in your shoes. 
um, we had to, to pound the pavement and, and work extra hard to, to get our skill set to where it needed to be and be able to prove that to an employer. But for you, you have access to an electronic portfolio system called Portfolium where you can build your own profile, you can um, showcase your greatness, showcase your skills and, and what you do do great. So Portfolium, Portfolium um, originated several years ago as its own system, um, but since then it has actually been acquired by Instructure, which Instructure is the company that um, owns Canvas, which is the learning management system you'll use on campus at Henderson. Um, so the two are integrated together very well and we'll walk you through how to create your Portfolium profile using Canvas um, to make it a very seamless and um, simple process to set everything up. But before we dive deep into that, I want to talk to you just a little bit about what it is and um, why it's important for you. Um, Portfolio, I have absolutely no doubt that you guys will be able to set this profile up um, and create the account and start adding content very easily. Um, it's similar to any other system you're familiar with using. Um, if you can manage a social media page, you can set up a Portfolio account. Um, what we do want to talk to you about, though, is some best practices with it and how to make it speak to an employer and make an employer want to talk to you in more detail, hence that job searching and networking. Um, as you'll recall from the diagram that Ms. Sigmund showed you, employers prefer to fill positions based on you working from within their company. So if you've had an internship or a part-time job with them and you're able to prove to them that you are are good at um, the job, or secondly, proof of skills, proof of abilities. Portfolio allows you to prove those abilities. And you do that by uploading projects, uploading pictures from experiences you've had, and writing detailed descriptions about those projects or those descriptions. So it's you giving evidence and giving proof that you've done something great, and this is why that's important to the employer. From there, you can then share that profile with employers so you can make it a part of your job application packet. You can put it on your social media accounts. You can add it to your LinkedIn profile. Um, so there's lots of ways to get that information out to an employee. You'll actually log into your Canvas account, your student Canvas account. When you log into this account, you should have access to a Henderson Seminar Super Course. And that Henderson Seminar Super Course is where all of your Henderson Seminar um, lectures will be, um, is my understanding. But what you'll need to do is click on that Super Course, and then on the left-hand side, on the navigation menu on the left-hand side of that course from a computer screen, you're gonna click the Portfolio tab. There is a Portfolio tab. You'll click that, and then from there, you'll see um, the abilities to start setting up that account. It may say add a new project or set up account, but you'll click that button and then start building your profile. Um, of course, if, if you run into issues with this, you can certainly reach out to me or Ms. Sigmund, or you can reach out to the learning management system team. Um, or you can just simply go to hsu.portfolium.com and set that account up that way. Um, but then moving forward, you can access your account by going through Canvas or just going to portfolium.com um, and start adding content and creating that profile. So that's how you set it up. Now, I want to talk to you just real quick about some practices. And if you need more one-on-one -on -one attention with this, or you'd just like someone to review your profile after you set it up, we are certainly happy to do that. Um, but just for the purpose of this, this lecture, we wanna go through some quick best practices for you and talk through how to make your portfolio most appealing to potential employers. Um, one of the first things that you can do here is actually add your resume. There's the option to add uh, the file type of your resume. Um, I highly recommend that you add it as a PDF file. Um, the reason I recommend that is because that means that no matter what device someone opens that resume on, it will open up exactly as, as you intended for it to. Um, but before you add this resume into the appropriate slot, and that slot's going to have a an upload feature if you scroll down your page on the left hand side there'll be a place to upload your resume um, and the profile system when you start to create it will actually prompt you to add your resume as well but before you do this as Ms. Sigmund said you need to have your resume reviewed 
So what we recommend is that you go through the Canvas course that Ms. Sigmund talked about, at least go through the resume module, learn some best practices on building a resume, build a draft, and then meet with someone on our career development team to let us review it. Um, what we recommend is that you let us review it at least once or twice, and then you actually have someone in your area or your field of study, maybe a professor or someone in your department, review it as well to make sure it's meeting the industry standards. But after you had it reviewed and approved, then you would upload that resume into the portfolio system. From there, you'll complete your profile. Um, sometimes when you add your resume, it will actually autofill some things for you, but you'll want to check that out and make sure that it autofilled correctly. Um, by completing a profile, what I mean is that you have a, an introduction, you have a tagline that's unique to you. Um, that introduction should talk about the professional you. You want to leave out things like your age, your hometown, or anything like that. That is not appropriate for this site. What you would talk about instead is maybe what you're majoring in, what you hope to do with that major, um, what are some specific skill sets that you have, um, what makes you qualified for the career you're choosing. From there, you'll add your experiences, your achievements, your accomplishments, anything that is relevant to you that highlights your, your best um, features and best skill set for the job. You also want to make sure that you use appropriate photos. So the, the picture here shows two different examples of what we would call a headshot photo, which will be your profile picture. Um, the profile picture for portfolio is, is different than what you might put on Facebook or Instagram um, or any of the other social media sites. You want it to look um, professional. You want it to look, you know, where you're inviting conversation. You wouldn't want to have a frown on your face or a picture that they can't really see who you are. Um, and as you can see from these examples, there's a better example and a bad example. Now, neither one of these is that perfect, but, but there's better options and then some that aren't so good. So you can see from the bad example, some things that I notice right off the bat are um, the letters in the background. So the background's not a neutral background and it looks like he actually has a word just disappearing into his head. Um, you, his graphic t-shirt is not as professional as he could be. Um, his hair doesn't look as combed as it could be. He's a little bit further from the camera, which isn't always a bad thing, but in the sense of a portfolio profile and even a LinkedIn, you want it to be more of a headshot type photo. So you can see from the better example, he has a collared shirt on, he has a neutral background, he has you know, a closer image of his face, and he's smiling. And um, that's one thing to note about both, is he is smiling in both pictures. That's important. Um, choosing to not smile or choosing to frown at, at the, the camera um, or you know, do an abstract photo or anything like that, that might actually steer an employer away from you um, because you don't appear to be approachable and inviting. So make sure you use appropriate photos. Um, other places where you will put photos, your project. So if you've done some volunteer work or had an experience at a, an internship or something of that nature, and you have pictures, you'll add pictures of that. Um, just make sure they're appropriate. Um, and then also in the profile section on the right hand side, when you're adding like your work experience and your education, there's a place to upload little icons um, to represent images, maybe logos or um, signage or something that, that represents the employer you're talking about or the institution you're talking about. So make sure that you add those. It just makes the, the profile look cleaner and nicer and more professional. Um, another big piece of this is you actually have the option to add skills to your profile. So the strengths and the abilities that you have or that you've demonstrated through your projects and through your experiences, you'll want to make sure that you, you type in those skills and it'll populate those as keywords into your profile. Um, the reason this is so important is because a lot of times employers will log into the system and they will search based on skills that they're looking for. So they may be looking for someone who has great communication skills. And they may type that in as a search for great written or oral communication skills. 
And if you've listed those skills and you have a few projects that also are attached to those skills, you will populate in their list and then therefore they may actually reach out to you for an interview um, or encourage you to apply for a position. So make sure that you add skills and, and add all of the skills that you can think of that are applicable to that project or applicable to your experiences. The written content. So if writing is not your biggest strength, if, if you struggle with written content, um, use your resources. We have a writing center on campus. I would highly encourage you to let them maybe review your profile, make sure everything is written correctly, grammatically correct, proper capitalization. The way you write and the way you carry yourself on this profile could mean you get a, a call or an invite from an employer and it could mean that you don't um, you know it's all about the first impression and first impressions come through in this sense based on your pictures and how approachable you look and based on how well you write if you don't write professionally they may not want to talk to you in a professional setting so make sure that you write it just like you're turning in a, a paper and your grade depends on it um, write that content in, in that way your projects. So a lot of times students get a little hung up on the projects and they're, they're like, well, I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything um, that's noteworthy. You have. You've had assignments in classes. You'll have assignments this semester in classes. Um, you maybe had some assignments your senior year in high school or you did a program, volunteer work, um, an internship, something over the summer. You can use pictures from that. You can use a file type of something you did. Um, the only real restriction you have here is if it's a video file of any type, um, you have to have a public URL to upload that video to Portfolio, which means that you need to upload it to YouTube or Vimeo first and then put the link into Portfolio. Um, but anything else, you know, it can be a Word file, a Google Drive file, um, PDF, Excel, whatever, whatever file type, whatever you've created or done, um, you'll upload that in as a project. You will um, then write a vivid description for that. And in the description, you want to be sure that you focus on what you did and then why that is significant. So whether that's significant because you got some sort of award or it's significant because this is how it would be beneficial to an employer. But you always want to kind of close the loop on that and say, this is what I did, but this is why it matters. So this is why um, it's in my portfolio. And then lastly, one of the things that you can do with the system is is actually just make connections. You can follow companies, you can make connections with other people. That can be people at our university, that can be people at other universities, um, that can be people that are out in the workforce. So you want to connect um, because networking is a big part of securing a job. Um, as Ms. Sigmund showed you from the diagram, and we'll, we'll go back to it quickly, um, as she showed you, employers prefer to fill positions in the opposite way that we prefer that we're taught to look for a job. And at the top of that, obviously hiring from within because they already know you and they already know your abilities. The next piece of this is proving that you can do it. So proving that you can do it through your portfolio and by showcasing your past projects and experiences or proving that you can do it because of an internship. And then just below that, it's through a colleague. It's through networking. So the way Portfolium can help you with that is let's say that you have a really solid profile. You have a really solid portfolio. And maybe you've connected with over 100 people on Portfolio. And maybe you didn't connect with the employer or the person at the, the company that you are going to work for someday. But maybe you connected with one of their colleagues or somebody that they know. They might call that person and say, hey, you know, I'm looking for somebody that's got experience doing this, this, and this. And that colleague or that person that you've connected with on portfolio may automatically think of you because they saw some really cool projects that you've done and that you've put on your portfolio profile. And they may say, you know, I, I've got somebody that I've connected with on portfolio that has experience in this, I think, I think you should take a look at their portfolio and then maybe reach out to them and talk to them about a job. 
So that's how this works. That's how networking and job searching can work in your favor. Um, so it's, it's very important that you take this seriously and, and not just as, you know, another assignment or another thing that you have to do. Building a solid portfolio, doing internships, having a strong resume, building professional relationships while you're here in college can really jumpstart your career. If you don't do that, if you come to college and don't really focus on what's after college, because there will be an after, you'll graduate eventually, you'll hopefully in four years, that's our goal, but you'll graduate and the real world will hit and you'll have to get a job. You'll have to make ends meet somehow. And what we want for you is for you to get the job that you dream of, get that career that you're going to love doing that you're going to be happy doing. But to do that, you've got to start taking the steps now. Build a resume, build a portfolio, network, and I promise it will be an easier transition after college. Real quick before we kind of close things up and finish things out, um, I mentioned don't just treat this as another assignment because this will be an assignment in your Henderson seminar classes. Um, what you will do is actually just create that profile um, it'll be a 50 point assignment for you in most of your classes, I believe. They'll be looking to make sure that you added a professional looking headshot and a cover photo. That cover photo can represent your field of study. It can represent who you are. You may even go look at some other profiles and get some example ideas. Um, you'll want to complete your profile. So really with this, just make sure that what you've added to your profile reflects your resume. Um, but add a personalized tagline and introduction. The tagline is going to be that sentence or phrase just under your name of, over the cover photo. And then your introduction is just a brief introduction of who you are professionally. You'll want to complete all of the work history, the education history, any accomplishments or any, anything that you've done um, throughout your career so far. By the time this assignment is due for you, you'll need to have 10 connections. Those can be other students, instructors, people from other places. You'll wanna add at least one project. So this can be an assignment that you've done in the past. This can be an experience you've had. This can be a project that you've had due this semester for another class. But you'll wanna upload that file and then write a vivid description that explains what you did and why that is significant and then you'll want to attach skills to that so that employers can search by the skills. Um, you will um, also, have, also have the option to add hashtags if you want to do that because some employers may even search by hashtags. So a very basic start to a profile. Now what I want to stress here is we don't want you to just stop here. We, obviously this is all that would be required for you for the assignment. But as I mentioned, if you start now as a freshman and start working towards your ultimate career goals and start taking the steps now with your resume and your portfolio and your interview skills and everything needed to land that dream job, it will be a much easier transition for you. Um, our goal is to actually have you get a job before you even graduate. So sign a contract and know where you're going to work before you even get your, your degree. Um, and that's happened to many of the students that we've helped, they've, they've had that luxury. So we want the same for you. And if there's ever anything that we can do to help you with any of those things that we've mentioned, your resume, your portfolio, your interview skills, um, we wanna help you, whether that be through our resources of the, the Canvas course um, or some one-on-one -on -one career counseling, we have a team that's dedicated to, to helping you achieve your career goals. So if you have any questions or you need more information or you're interested in that one-on-one, -on -one, um, feel free to contact us at career at hsu.edu. Um, and then also, you know, like Ms. Sigmund talked about the Canvas course, if you want to register for that, the link is in a previous slide, um, but you can also just email us and we'll send you the link as well to be able to register. So. Thank you guys. Um, Ms. Sigmund, do you have anything you'd like to add before we log off? No, just a big thing is guys, is that career development needs to be something that you start on now. You don't really need to wait until your senior year to start doing all this stuff because you have so many senior projects and big projects that you have done due in your senior year. 
So start now, start thinking about these things, start utilizing our department now, start learning from us. We really do are passionate about wanting to help students get jobs before they graduate because uh, we, uh, we learned the hard way, Ms. Goza and I did. And if we had <clears throat> utilized our resources like we should have when we were in college, it probably would have not have been as hard as it was. So understand that we're here to help you. Um, you definitely can email us. We have, a, like she said, we have a whole team of GAs, graduate assistants that are really good at this that we've trained. And we just want to help you uh, get your dream job. And by all means, please, guys, attend this career fairs that we have it every semester because this is a great way for you to connect, network, and start job searching. And y'all have a good day. Yeah. And just be watching. So we will send, Miss um, Sigmund will actually send some emails to you weekly with updates and information from career development. So be watching your student emails for that. We'll be sharing more information about the career fairs and just um, everything else that we're doing in career development to help you. So. Bye. 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 Bye.